Hello, Simon Jones here from hitfilm.com here with a look at a slightly abstract effect which I'm calling procedural fractal wipe. This is actually something that I was inspired to do based on a separate tutorial from Wynn Conway who is a regular over on the hitfilm.com forums. I recommend you check out his channel as well because he's putting together a whole bunch of really interesting procedural tutorials over there. Okay, so here's the effect. You can see it's this kind of strange wibbly texture that then disintegrates procedurally from left to right. Quite what you'd use this for, I'm not really sure, maybe a shield or some kind of alien membrane. Anyway, let's go from scratch and take a look at how we do it. So starting off, I'll create a standard white plane and I'm going to use this to create a displacement map. So to do this, we're going to use the fractal noise. Fractal noise is a new HitFilm 2 effect and is extremely useful for creating quick procedurally generated textures. You can see there's a whole bunch of different options here. Depending on what kind of look you're going for, this will create obviously very different results. I'm going to stick with clouds for this particular effect. Okay, on top of this, I'm going to put the chrominator effect. Chrominator is so cool because it makes things look a bit chromey. Uh, depending on the settings, you'll get vastly different looks as you can see here. Um, because of the abstract nature of this effect, there's not really a right or a wrong way, so just find something that looks kind of interesting. I'm going to go for a kind of globular but not too detailed kind of look. Now that we're done with that, uh, we shall create a grade layer, and this is just to flatten those effects into the plane. Uh, we'll see in a minute exactly why that's useful. Okay, uh, another layer there just for our background. We'll just leave that there so we've got a nice white background and we can forget about it. Uh, we'll now make another plane, which is going to be our, our main layer. Okay, so what we want to do is a procedural wipe from left to right. You could use this for a transition, for example. To actually do it, I'm going to make a mask, add that over the entire layer there, just using the, the square drawing tool, and then set up two keyframes to move the mask from left to right. Using the select tool up in the viewer, you can just move the whole mask as one. And you can see that now as I scrub through, you now have a nicely moving mask from left to right. Uh, because this layer is white and the background layer is white, you can't really see, so let's throw on another fractal noise. Okay, that layer now has some texture, and you can see that as we move along, the mask is gradually revealing the white plane underneath. But, you can see the edge of the mask is completely solid. You've just got this straight line uh, from top to bottom, which isn't particularly interesting. So this is where this interesting technique comes in, using displacement. What we're going to do is use the displacement effect to take the pattern from the first layer we did and apply it to this layer, which will actually cause the edge of the mask to uh, displace and mutate into this strange alien pattern. So I set it up for luminance, which means it will take the brightness from the displaced layer and apply it to this layer. And you can see as we adjust the horizontal displacement here, you get this really interesting disintegrating kind of effect. You can see with the displacement I linked it to the grade layer. That means that anything below that grade layer is flattened and that's what's being used as the displacement source. So again, depending on how you set it up, you'll get vastly different looks here. But in almost no steps at all, we have this really interesting uh, disintegrating displacement effect. Far more interesting than a kind of standard gradient wipe from one side to the other. Okay, you can then... Uh, to make things a bit more interesting, maybe go into the fractal noise and animate some of the settings in there. Depending on what you do, you can get vastly different results. I'm just going to animate the transform property here, uh, and that just gives a slight shimmer to the fractal noise, which kind of makes it look a bit more organic, um, depending on how you do this, or depending on different effects. Maybe if you're going for the oily black goo from Prometheus or something, that can give this a very organic alien kind of feel. Okay, let's do a few more things to make this a bit more interesting and look a bit more uh, finessed. So on top of this, we're now going to go for a parallax effect. Initially, it doesn't look particularly different, but uh, if we add on... Actually, I'm just going to zoom that up a bit so that we get rid of those white edges around the edge. And then, if we add some 3D lights, we're going to start seeing some very interesting effects. Parallax always works best if you have some 3D lights to react off of it. Parallax, as you might have seen from one of our recent tutorials, turns any 2D layer into a kind of 3D surface. So you can see here as I move this 3D light around, it's creating shadowing and kind of shading on it that makes it look like a 3D textured surface. Uh, I'm going to change this light to have a curved fall off. That means that the light uh, emanates out but then gradually loses its power the further away from uh, the light source. Okay, and we can just position this. Obviously, depending on how you set up these lights will vastly change the appearance of the surface that you're dealing with. 
Um, I'm just going to create a few duplicates of this. You can see you can brighten it up or maybe change the color to something else. I'll go for a blue, maybe move that down a bit. Um, it's really interesting the way you can work with 3D lights to kind of paint particular colors onto a layer like this. This is a trick that also works really nicely with the uh, atomic particles effect. Rather than using, say, a gradient to add colors, you can actually use 3D lights um, so that the, the Z distance will also have an effect on that appearance. Okay, let's go for something a bit more yellowy over here. Just move it up. Um, so you have a play with that and go for whatever you think looks nice. Okay, that looks like a far more interesting effect. Uh, kind of like the surface of uh, an insect, perhaps. I don't know. If you think of something useful to use this for, then let me know. I just thought it looked kind of cool. Okay, so that's, that's kind of the core of the effect, but you can now add on a few additional effects to just make it look a little bit more natural, you know, as natural as a weird effect like this can actually look. Uh, so let's go for light wrap. This is something that you might normally use if you're compositing, say, a green screen layer onto a background. Um, but in this particular case, because we're compositing onto a white background, we want some of that white to bleed around the edge of our foreground. So again, we'll just uh, select that new grade layer as we did before. Then we can just adjust this to give it a slightly bloomed out edge around the disintegrating elements. If we toggle that on and off, you can see the difference that's making. I'm actually going to duplicate it and then create an alternate version with a much bigger radius. Uh, so that kind of just makes it look a bit more like the light is blooming out. You can see as it comes in, you just get a more natural edge there as if uh, it's something you might have captured in camera with a particular exposure setting. Um, okay, on top of that, we're now going to take the light rays effect and apply that onto a grade layer above everything else. Light rays is a particular favorite of mine and it can make it look like lighting is interacting with the CG element in a, in a more convincing manner. So I'm just going to stick it over to the left here, ramp up the radius a little bit so we can see it interacting with all the shapes there. And then as that mask does the, uh, the reveal, you're going to have these light shafts kind of interacting a little bit more there. Um, so you end up with something a little bit like this. And again, the position of that light ray is going to make a, a big difference to the overall effect. But really all these uh, additional effects that I'm putting on here are just to make it look a little bit like what you would expect if this was something you'd actually shot with a real camera. Okay, I'm mostly happy with that, I think. And then I'm just going to put lens dirt on because as you've probably seen from some of my videos, I tend to put lens dirt on pretty much everything. Uh, but in a case of a fully CG shot like this, lens dirt does actually give it a, a much more natural kind of feeling. So you can see that as the light peels across the image, you get this blooming out in the lens. Mm. Uh, the shape here in the middle is a little too obvious, so let's just increase a couple of settings here. Mostly the blur, just to kind of flatten out the shape, so you can't pick out the specifics in the detail too much, but you just get this general blooming and kind of in-lens reflection going on. And there you go, you can kind of see that as the light moves across, it's blooming out the image and looks like a nice dirty lens. You can maybe add on some shake or something extra like that if you were so inclined. Okay, so yeah, you could take this effect and maybe... Uh, add a circle mask to it, create a different shape, apply it onto a person, use it as some kind of energy shield, if you like, that disintegrates on impact, that kind of thing. Um, there's really all sorts of potential sci-fi and fantasy uses, or even just use it as a an interesting wipe in a motion graphics or demo reel of some sort. Um, and yeah, If you go back into the original layer and play around with some of the fractal noise settings, you obviously can create very, very different edges uh, in terms of detail and shape and pattern. So, um, yeah, this is the benefit of doing things procedurally, which is that you don't bake anything in. You can go back in and tweak it and play around a little bit, depending on what you want to go for. Um, I actually think with this particular thing that not having too much detail works nicely. So something a little bit more like this, where you just get kind of a few big wisps going on, works kind of well. Yeah, something a little bit like that. Okay, I hope this was useful, and like I say, check out Wing Conway's tutorials as well, because they fill in some more details on this and have some interesting tips on doing gradient wipes in interesting ways. Okay, this was a bit of a whistle-stop tutorial, but hopefully for some of you it was useful. Uh, later in the week we'll have some more stuff from Axel coming up, where he's continuing his fireworks tutorial at a slightly slower pace. Um, so, yeah, we shall see you next time. Bye-bye.